Hello guys, in this video we'll be looking at the autosomal DNA results, predicted phenotype traits and GD match results of two Chimerians. Now who are Chimerians? Let's read this Wikipedia page. The Chimerians were an ancient East Iranic equestrian nomadic people originating in the Pontic Caspian steppe part of whom subsequently migrated into Western Asia. Although the Chimerians were culturally Scythian, they formed an ethnic unit separate from the Scythians proper, to whom the Chimerians were related and who displaced and replaced the Chimerians later. Uh, now, with illustrative DNA, I actually score a little bit of Chimerian, you can see on the bottom right of the screen. Um, for the Iron Age model, I'm getting modeled as a mixture of Estonian plus Greek plus Chimerian, and this is actually the closest model to me, so I am a little bit uh, Chimerian, this was me, uh, partially. Let's get into the results of the first guy, he's got YDNA RZ645, which is actually the parent clade of both the Slavic RZ2, I think, 82, and both the Indo-Iranian RZ93, so he could have either one of those, I think he had RZ93, that's my assumption here. Um, with Mana Shakot, he is predicted to have blue eyes with an amber center, Greek shaped nose, and blonde hair. Uh, that's how I depicted him here. With Snipper Free, he's predicted to have um, blue eyes, blonde hair, and white skin. And with um, Y Sec, he's also predicted to have blue eyes, blonde hair, and white skin. He had blue eye after type 1 and BH2. Uh, his status for BH3 is undetermined, definitely did not have BH4. Um, he's got some lighter skin and features based on his genotypes in SLC 45A2 and SLC 24A5. Uh, he's got some dark pigmentation variants, which you can see on the screen, and he also got some light pigmentation variants. Uh, aside from those aforementioned, you can also see those on the screen. When it comes to his genotype in Combs Valmet variation, he is a warrior with the IO, which means Val Val, which means um, less dopamine in the system, quicker dopamine reuptake. Now, this genotype actually conflicts with his genotype in MAOA, which means uh, he is a warrior there in MAOA. Uh, so these, these genotypes, they kind of cancel out. So together, he probably has intermediate uh, speed of dopamine reuptake and the intermediate amount of dopamine in the system. Uh, when you consider both of these genotypes. Uh, he is he does have the sociopath gene in this variation of OXTR. He's got a sociopath genotype, which is TT. Pretty common genotype, actually. Uh, and he's got this very uncommon genotype. You can see only 3% of people have this genotype here, which increases the odds of dyslexia. Now, moving on to polygenic traits, he's got an average risk score for schizophrenia. Uh, he's got an average risk score for Parkinson's disease. Uh, he's got a low risk score for type 1 diabetes. Um, he's got a average risk score for brain aneurysm. He's got a low risk score for type 2 diabetes. Uh, he's got a low risk score for coronary heart disease. Uh, he's got an average risk score for asthma. And uh, he's got a very low risk score for bipolar disorder. Now we're moving on to his ethnicity. This individual is very Iranic. As you can see, he's actually closest to various uh, proto Iranics in. Uzbekistan or Tajikistan, like Kokcha and Dashti Kozi, are proto-Iranic individuals from Central Asia. So, so he's very similar to these proto-Iranic individuals, and he's actually not very East Asian. He doesn't have that much Siberian ancestry, uh, which is pretty different from the second individual you're going to see. Uh, this is what he scores with Eurogenes K13. He is scoring 23%. 22.5% West Asian, and as you can see, he's not scoring any Siberian, Amerindian, East Asian. He doesn't have any Siberian uh, admixture. Very interesting result. This may be the purer, purer uh, Chimerian out of those two that you're going to see in this video. He's getting modeled as a mixture of North Swedish plus Tabasaran or Southwest Finnish plus Tabasaran. So a mixture of something from Northern Europe plus Caucasus. This is what he scores with MZLPK16 Modern. Interesting that he's scoring 5% Indian here. Uh, that's probably from BMAC admixture, and he does have a lot of step-specific drift. So if you add up the 30% step plus the Caucasian plus a part of the Northeast European, a lot of step admixture. And he is closest to various Russians, Russians, Kazakhs, Russians, uh, Moksha, Poles. So he's, um, in, term in terms of this calculator's oracle, most similar to Eastern Europeans. And he's actually getting modeled as a mixture of Latvian plus uh, Dagestan or Latvian plus Chechen or Finnish plus plus Dagestan or Finnish plus some kind of Dagestan. So yeah, a mixture of uh, seemingly Northeast European and somebody from the Caucasus. This is what he scores with Harappa World. Notice how he is scoring 6% Caucasian, only 6% Caucasian, 
uh, next to the 23% Baloch. So that's because Baloch here captures ancient Caucasus and Iranian Neolithic shift, whereas Caucasian here is meant to capture modern Caucasian uh, drift and he doesn't have any modern Caucasian drift and doesn't have any modern Caucasian admixture uh, All of his Caucasus admixture is from CHG or even a little bit of BMAC and because of that he's mostly scoring Baloch here This is what he scores with Ponzi and LK10. He's actually scoring pretty low on the CHG component But I think he makes up for it by scoring around 7% ASI uh, the 7% ASI is undoubtedly coming from BMAC admixture and he's actually getting modeled as a mixture of Norwegian plus Pashtun or Scottish plus Kalash which are uh, groups in Pakistan and this is what he scores with ancient Eurasia K6. Here he is not scoring as much ancestral South Eurasian components at least it doesn't look like he's scoring all that much ancestral South Eurasian stuff. Uh, but he is scoring a lot of ancient North Eurasian plus Natufian and together those are very CHG slash, slash BMAC slash Iranian Neolithic components. Uh, getting more of this mixture of Yamne plus various Jews here. And uh, this is what he scores with Gidrosia K3. Very West Eurasian individual and actually pretty different from uh, the other Chimerian that you're going to see later. Here's the second guy. Now, um, if we just assume that the previous individual had Z93 subclade of Z645 or whatever, then they have the same Y DNA. And you probably have to make this assumption because it's it would be very surprising if the previous guy had like Z282, for example. Now, let's move on to this this individual. He's predicted to have brown eyes, Greek or snub shaped nose, kind of indeterminate. Both of them are pretty similar, 48 versus 51% and blonde or brown hair. Uh, with my hair ID 2 he's predicted to have wavy hair or curly hair. Uh, with Snipper Free, he's predicted to have brown eyes, brown hair, and white skin. Uh, his status for BH1, 2, or 4 cannot be determined, and he does not have BH3. Now, just because you can't tell whether he has BH2 or not, uh, based on his genotype, based on his raw data file, that doesn't mean you can't determine his eye color, because there is some other variants that are in OCA2, for example, that can be used to predict his genotype in BH2, right? So it's still a pretty good prediction. He probably did have brown eyes. When it comes to SLC45A2 and Keto G, uh, and these are the only uh, variants that he was genotyped for that have to do with skin color, aside from maybe IORF4, which also sort of does have to do with skin color, he definitely had light uh, European skin tone. Based on his genotype in OXTR, we can assume that he was probably, as you can read here, optimistic and empathetic and handles stress well. Uh, now, moving on to lactose persistence, he does not have the European lactose persistence mutation. <coughs> so, um, if he was a European, he'd be probably lactose intolerant. It has to do with Europeans mostly. Now, uh, does not have derived EZAR, no East Asian facial traits, no shovel-shaped incisors or epicanthic folds. Um, he does have this mutation, this variation, uh, this variant that protects against myopia, which is pretty cool. Uh, and he's got this genus set, which increases the risk of balding by seven times. Genus set is like a collection. Uh, it's a collection of genotypes. Multiple genotypes together is a genus set. So he's definitely got higher odds of going bald. And he's got this genotype. Uh, for higher IQ, as you can see, around 5 IQ points higher than the GG genotype here. Moving on to polygenic traits, he's got an average risk score for type 1 diabetes. Uh, he's got a low risk score for coronary heart disease. He's got a very low risk score for type 2 diabetes. Uh, he's got a average risk score for asthma. Uh, he's got a low, very low risk score for bipolar disorder and a very low risk score for schizophrenia. In terms of ethnic similarity, this individual is much more Eastern than the previous individual. As you can see, he's getting modeled as a mixture of Indian plus Tajik plus 17% Shor. So he is uh, very heavily Siberian admixed. And the modern groups that are closest to him are actually Besermians, Tatars, Komi, uh, and Udmurts, which are very heavily East Eurasian admixed. Uh, with Eurogenes K13, he actually scores 12% Siberian, 1% East Asian, and also 6% Amerindian. Altogether, that's like a quarter. Uh, if, you, if, you add, if you add this up to the East Eurasian that's baked into the Baltic category, altogether, that's like a quarter East Eurasian admixture. He's closest to Tatars here. And he's getting modeled as a mixture of Southwest Finnish plus Tajik or Finnish plus Tajik uh, with very high distances. The previous individual was getting modeled as a mixture of Finnish plus Dargin or Finnish plus North Caucasus, just so you can remember. This is what he scores with MDLP K16. Uh, as you can see, he's scoring a lot of Siberian and Amerindian 
and Arctic all together, that's maybe 15% if you add those up, maybe even more. Uh, very different from the previous sample. And he's actually closest to Udmurts, followed by Mishar Tatars. If you remember, the previous sample was modeled as closest to Kazakhs and uh, Southern Russian, so it's a very big difference here. Uh, and with the Oracle, this sample is getting modeled as a mixture of Udmurt plus Tabasaran, or Udmurt plus some kind of group in Dagestan. So roughly two-thirds Udmurt and one-third uh, Dagestan is this individual. That's what he scores with Harappa World. Um, once again, we can see, aside from the high baloch, which is typical for various Iranic individuals from Eastern Europe, he's also got 9% Siberian and 3% Northeast Asian. And because of this admixtures, he's closest to Chuvash here. Uh, Chuvash are Turkic people native to Chuvashia, Republic in Russia. Uh, and he's getting modeled as a mixture of either Russian plus Brahvi or Chuvash plus Brahvi. So relative to the Chuvash, he's a little bit shifted towards, uh, it, seeming, it seems, South Central Asians and uh, various Pakistanis. This is what he scores with Pandian and LK10. Once again, a lot of Beringian and a lot of East Asian and uh, Siberian. And he's getting modeled as a mixture of Chuvash plus Kalash. The same picture here, a mixture of Chuvash and various South Central Asians. Uh, this is what he scores with Ancient Eurasia K6. Notice the 17.5% East Asian. Once again, big difference here from the previous individual who had no East Asian admixture. And this one has got 17.4. And with Gidrosia K3, he's actually one quarter East Eurasian. Also very different from the previous individual. And this kind of a mixture between East Eurasian and West Eurasian is the reason why he is closest to various Tatars and Udmurts with uh, G25. It's an artificial similarity because they're similar in proportions in terms of West and East Eurasian admixture. Uh, thanks for watching my video until the end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. You can download both of these samples in 23andMe format from link which is in the description. Goodbye.